Okay, so basically with FreeCAD, um, if everybody has it downloaded, um, the my intent today is basically just give you a quick overview on designing a basic part. Uh, there's so many sections to FreeCAD that you basically, I could spend a month showing them to you and not even scratch the surface. I'm just going to show the most common features that I use. And there's a lot, I still am just, uh, I figure new stuff out every day because it's just such a, it, there's so many features and so much stuff in it. Um, one of the biggest things is when you open FreeCAD, you, you know, you're pretty much presented with the interface here, and there's not a whole lot of toolbars. The toolbars are, are managed right here with the, uh, uh, the workbench, they call it. And you can select everything from all the toolbars if you like having like no, no space to work because it winds up literally taking the entire, uh, your entire screen. Of course, it really, my laptop's not happy about me selecting that. But it basically loads every single toolbar at once. Um, I usually work with, and there's actually toolbars going off to the right here like for like five screens. So you can get lost there. But uh, most people will probably want to start up and go straight for part design. That's where you're doing parametric design. It supports sol working with solids, working like you're working with Blender. I honestly have not used that. I have not had the need for it. Um, I've watched a few YouTube videos on it and I've played with it, but I've not got good with it. But you know, I, I, my, my interest is designing parts to, for 3D printers and drones and stuff that I work on. So I need exact measurements, so I stay within, within the parametric design area here. So under part design, when you first come up here, after you, you change that, the menu bars will, will begin change. So right now, I am in the um, part design mode, but I don't have a part, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new part. So once you've, you've got your part, it uh, actually will show the in the application thing all the different parts you have loaded. You can have five, six, ten parts loaded and switch between them and take measurements between them or whatnot. Um, I try to keep only one in there because it gets confusing. And honestly, the, the, there are some there are some still some issues with the software as far as referencing lines and stuff. I try to keep it to a minimum with what I'm working with. It's just it's free software. You know there is uh, there are some limitations. So once you've got your your part up, you can go back over to tasks or you can go straight to the toolbar. I'm going to go ahead and pull this down. I usually bring this down here uh, and have this somewhere in the uh, relative area. And what else we have here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, create a sketch with, I, I, don't know, I don't know what everybody's level of uh, familiarity with CAD is, but with CAD basically you draw a, a sketch like you're drawing on a piece of paper and you, you create your part by extruding that 2D sketch up into the, the 3D world. So you basically start with a piece of paper and, you, and then you give it height. So you start with like a, a drawing you've done your, on your paper, which is a sketch, and you, when you extrude that, it's literally like it sounds, it draws that up it makes that a 3D part based on your 2D sketch. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and start creating a sketch. When you create a sketch, you always have to create it on a plane. That's its, it's physical uh, space, which, 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 which you're going to be working. So I always usually, usually start on either the X, Y plane, or sometimes I'll start on the Y, Z plane. Um, basically, what that means is you're looking down on the X, Y as if you're looking at like a 3D printer or the mill. Or the the, the shop bot or you know any kind of uh, CNC equipment, you just, like you're looking down on it and you're working on that. You can also like if you're doing it from YZ, it looks like you're looking at it from the side, uh, depending on how you're going to draw your part and how you want it to orient once it's drawn. So the initial drawing has to be on uh, an origin type plane, or as far as I know. Um, you can give it an offset. I wouldn't. I don't. So I want to just start on the XY plane. So as you can see immediately here, we in the middle we have uh, you have your X and your Ys, and you can select them. I'm just basically just showing um, in Sketcher mode, the w there is no need to shift click to select multiple items. It's automatic. Matter of fact, you I find myself pressing more Escape more often than anything because I've over selected or I've selected more than I wanted to. Um, when it comes when you want to draw stuff inside of uh, the Sketcher. Your, your items for drawing is you can put points. Uh, I don't know if you can see where, I, where I've got the mouse right now, but right here, there's yeah, several yeah, different uh, dimensions and ways you can draw things. And you can put a point, an arc, a circle, a line. I think that's uh, polylines, um, a square, and a uh, fillet. As well as you can disconnect, uh, you can break lines. So you can draw a circle, then like draw like a line through it, then disconnect half of it, turn it into an arc with a line. It has a thing to do that, the cutting in, of, of that. Um, but as you as you create your part on the sketch, you have to tell FreeCAD 
how it's restricted in that space because it has to know how to rebuild it. If you don't define your, 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 your um, constraints, which I'll show you that in a moment, um, it doesn't know how to rebuild it. You have to say, I want from the X, I want it so far, or from the Y, I want it so far. And keep in mind how you're going to be possibly changing your part because you want your constraints to be relative. You don't want to have a constraint that conflicts with another one if you change a dimension. So when you like, let's say you, you you're just I'm, I'm going to draw a box and basically put four holes in it um, for the purpose of say a, like a mount plate. This is one of the most common things I wind up making. But the only measurements that I, I give a whole lot of measurement to in, regarding constraints are the holes. And then I know I want to have X amount of space from the holes, so I, I constrain everything around that. I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and grab the box tool, um, and I'm going to draw a box. Now I'm just going to draw it pretty much anywhere. It really does not matter because um, once I give it constraints, it'll wind up being where I want it. So what this is showing is basically four lines, and that uh, like this right here, that is actually a constraint that it added for me, saying that it's a horizontal constraint, as well as these are vertical constraints, which means these lines, no matter where they're at in that space, are going to be straight up and down or horizontal or vertical, depending on which constraints on it. Now, uh, if you look over here, it says I've I've under constraints sketch with four degrees of freedom. I try to work with no more than one or two degrees of freedom if I can, because when you get a lot of degrees of freedom, you can draw a great sketch and you can just lose where you're at with your constraints and you'll never, it, it, you break constraints or it just gets frustrating. So I always try to keep it as constrained as I can when I'm working with it. So the first thing I want to do is, I typically when I'm doing something like this, I will put um, the box around my, my whole pattern simply because it makes it easier for working on it. So I'm actually just going to take and unselect the uh, point tool I had there. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this corner here and I'm going to drag it there. And this is simply just so it's, I can get, I've got an idea where I'm putting things. So I'm basically we're going to be making a, uh, I'm going to be making some mount, a mount here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the circle and what I want to do here is, is I'm going to put four holes on the screen uh, you know, basically like the mount of board. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm, the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to put on origin. The reason origin, that's zero, zero. That is a known location that will, that will always be where I want it. Uh, so one of the holes I'm, when, I'm, when I'm doing something like this, it's just something I do. You don't have to do it this way. But I put it right there. You see how, it's, how it has the dot next to it? That is showing that it's going to make it part of that. that is, that's going to put the constraint that it is the same location in space. So I'm going to go ahead and I draw a circle. I'm not even going to worry about the size of it right now. So we're going to do that. Now I'm going to also need to put one in this corner. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click here. And I'm getting a different, um, you get a different symbol. That arc with the dot on it means that that dot is just on that line. It doesn't say anything more than it is on it. It doesn't give it a distance, it doesn't anything. But what it says is it's on the y-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and click on So when I let go of that, that, that symbol shows on the part. And what that means is, is no matter what I do here or, or here, it's going to stay on that. It doesn't move in that axis. That's, that's restricted. That's got the constraint added to it. This one, I can change the size. But since I went off of origin, which is 0, 0, that's a fixed point in space that doesn't move. This won't move because it's locked. It's locked because it's part of origin. It's part of the, part of the, 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 the um, the actual predefined sketch when you start it up. I think it's, let's see here. So I'm going to go ahead and put one more on it for this one here. And it's doing the same thing I did on the other, just making sure that it's it's locked on this this plane. And then this here, we're just, I'm just for now I'm just going to put this out in space. This is going to be able to pretty much do, this will move around and you know it can be moved. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start. I'm going to constrain this. I'm going to show you several ways you can do it. Um, it's one of those things. There's a million ways you can do it. I don't know in everybody's case if one way will be better than the other. You really have to just experiment with what you're trying to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to standardize the hole sizes. So I'm going to go ahead and select all four holes. And now they've turned green, so I have them selected. Now, as you're looking here, um, you'll see symbols in this on the toolbar I'm, I'm working with now that are right here. This out of the way. So in this toolbar, these are your constraints uh, that you can you can add to it. Now this is a rate. This is the radius tool. I mean, actually, let me go through them. 
this is a point constraint saying that it's coincident with another point. Uh, this is what was added to the circle on the bottom left automatically for me when I created it. If I wanted to fix one of the other circles to a point, I would select both points and I would click that, and that would put them together. The one next to it is the one that's on the other two, the upper left and lower right, that says it's on that line. It can be a circle, it can be any kind of axes. Um, that's just showing a circle, that, um, that's actually uh, kind of an unclear, it took me a while to figure out exactly what that was and what you can do with it because it doesn't really show you what it is. Then this is a horizontal line. If you draw like a freehand line, you can make it to where it can have angles, whatever, but if you basically give it that constraint, that means it's gonna be vertical up and down, that's it. Same thing with the horizontal, this is parallel. Um, parallel is one I almost never need to use as long unless you start getting into weird shapes because if, two, if you have two horizontal items, they're obviously going to be parallel. If you add a parallel constraint to two things that have horizontal constraints, you actually get over, over um, you wind up getting over constrained and then that's actually worse than under because then it, stuff can really break and it doesn't know what to do and bad things happen. So keep an eye on the message from the solver as you're drawing because that's a big one. If, that, if you get over constrained and you don't fix it, when it happens, you can continue to have more and more problems. And when you go backtrack to fix it, you'll have, you wind up, sometimes it's quicker just to start over, at least I found. So the one I'm going to actually use now, um, oh, sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting away from myself here. So this is the, um, this one here is the perpendicular constraint. Basically it says that, it, say you have a line at a 45 and you want one to come out at a perfect 90, you can actually put that on there. Uh, this is the tangent constraint. Um, that one I'll, I'll, I'll show later. Uh, basically what that is, if you have two lines, you want to draw an arc between them, and you want that arc to be flowing you know, on a tangent, basically that lets that happen. Uh, it's really useful if you want to do um, like two, two curves and kind of get like the effect of like a compound curve. Uh, that's pretty much what you use there. Equal, well, that pretty much means everything you just selected has an equal measurement of some sort, either distance, length, or uh, usually distance and uh, diameter. Uh, the point of symmetry uh, constraint uh, creates a symmetry constraint. Basically, I use that in the most part just to make a midpoint or to define something <coughs> as in the middle of two things. Uh, you can do that in multiple places. I'll show you some examples here later. Um, the a lot constraint basically means you can't change it. It'll keep you from making any accidental changes to something. The horizontal distance constraint fixes two points in the space horizontally a distance apart. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter vertically. That's what the next one is for, is vertical. I almost never use those now. If anything, those usually cause me more trouble than anything with over constraining. The one I use the most is actually to fix the a length. You can basically define a line as a length. And I find with the horizontal and vertical constraints, unless I'm doing something really strange or really complex, I can get away with just doing horizontal constraints, distances, and stuff like that. I don't really need to use the other two. So the one where I'm gonna put on the circles, uh, not to get too far off topic here, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a radius on them. I'm gonna define the diameter of the circles. But it's actually the, uh, uh, gotta remember, and I, I tend to make the mistake until I, I try to print it or laser cut it and I realize I'm twice the size I wanna be. It's, it's a radius, not the diameter. And I tend to think diameter when I'm, when I'm working with something. So you wanna go half of whatever your size is uh, if you're making a hole for a screw or something. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click on that, and it says, you, it gives you a warning. It says, real, real warning, um, do you wanna share the same radius for all selected elements? Well, yes, I do. So hit yes, and I'm gonna put, um, it's a three millimeter uh, bolt, usually that I put in this kind of uh, mount. So I'm gonna do 1.75, uh, give it a little bit of clearance. And now they're, they all change. Now they're all still able to move around even in their respective unrestricted uh, constraints Whereas this can move up and down, this can move, this can't move, this one can move, you know, left or right. This one can go pretty much anywhere. It's not really he's just out there. So the next thing we need to do is I need to define uh, distances on how far apart they are. So what you can do, what I'm going to do here is I'm basically going to click on that one, and this one. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can just select two points, and because this is fixed on this line, I can just say it's going to be this far apart because that's the only way that this can move is up and down. So I can basically click on those two and then click on the distance and specify a distance between them and that will lock those two in place. They, they, they no longer can move X and Y nor can they change size. Those two parts will be fully constrained. So I'm going to put 30 millimeters on it and I will do the same 
for this point and this point. Now, for the, the one that's up here, there's several ways I've tackled this, and I'm not really... Um, yeah, the, the, basically, the, the easiest way to handle this guy is I'll actually select from the x-axis, and then I click the dot and I put a distance on that. That's one of the ways to do it. I'm going to actually undo that here in a minute and I'll show you the other way to do it. So I'm actually putting a separate measurement that's the same, but it's, 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 uh, uh, and that'll do the same here just to show you the two ways of what, why you may or may not want to do something like this. So now I have the two tops selected and I'm going to go ahead and put a, put a distance constraint on that. And I should. Okay, so the only thing left on my degrees of freedom are the outside lines. But I want to show you something here. This is the other way uh, that I have uh, done a lot of them, just simply so I don't have a million measurements to change one thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these, these distance measurements off, and this is just another way of doing the same thing. And it really, when you're doing um, something you're, you're definitely going to be resizing quite a bit, it's, it's helpful to have as least amount of places to enter that value as possible. Um, and have it ref and have everything related by a value. So I'm going to go ahead and take those measurements off, and I'm going to do do something here. And this is something I haven't explained yet. So, when you're drawing inside of the the, the uh, your your uh, your sketch, you can create lines that are defining the physical item, and you can also create reference lines. And the way that you create the reference lines is this right this tool right here toggles the re from reference mode to um, construction mode. I believe it is. Let's see here. Yeah, geometry to construction, they're calling it. I'm sorry, I'm used to uh, using other CAD packages that refer to it slightly differently. But long story short, when you click on that, it turns lines blue. Blue lines are for pretty much your reference lines. Those are, you can draw those into space, and you will lock, you basically are just creating a point constraint, but it's not actually part of the part. It won't, when you extrude, it won't show in what you're extruding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a line. And on the, uh, the two axes to this guy, I'm going to go ahead, because I don't need to do it between here, because remember, those are, on the, those are on the x and y axes, or plane, or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to start a line from there. I'm going to go to here. Now, this is showing me two symbols. It's going to be connected via point, and it's going to be horizontal. So that's going to lock that circle to, that cir to, the, uh, to the other one on the horizontal plane and keep it from moving you know, the other direction or keep it from moving off of the line. I'm sorry, so it's gonna be attached to the line. So by doing that, now when I grab this line, I'm moving both of them. I can still move it this way. So now I'm gonna do the same thing though to this one. So I'm gonna actually make that a little easier. I don't wanna have to do that later. So we'll go here and we'll do this. <coughs> so now we have these guys move. Now, for the point of um, making this easy to dimension, I will also add on the on the <coughs> y and the x, just simply so I can you know give them an equals uh, dimension. Because I'm going to just make a box; it's going to be square. And, and this, you don't always need to do this. This is something uh, that just makes it when you have a line, you can say that the lines are equal, or have them multiple selected. And it, it, in the uh, CAD package, will, the FreeCAD will know what the, what you mean by measurements. I'll show you that in a sec. So basically by doing that it's still everything's locked but now everything's moving in moving together. So if I click on these two and this is what I want the reason I'm doing this is I click on these two and I can say okay these are going to be equal so it's going to make it be pretty much a lot you know the square. So now no matter what I measure it's it's now square. And there's other ways to do it. You just have to get the get the constraints in there to say that those are not going to ever be you know unrelated uh, distances or varying diff distances. So now all I have to do to set the size of this box, if I want to change it later, instead of setting it three or four different places all over the place, I just go to one spot and I go, okay, I want this to be a 30 millimeter box. Those, those holes now perfectly on, on center on 30. So you notice I haven't been doing anything with the, the outside box. And there's a reason for that. Is usually when I'm working with this, that's just kind of the trimming on, you know, I, 
it may, there may be some restraints on how far I can have things or not, maybe not. So what I typically do here is I'll just click this, um, click this point, and then I will click, uh, I click the line, then I will basically off of the origin. I'll basically click here. Well, I can actually, let me do it the same way on the other one there, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna grab lines, because I found this actually to be easier uh, the other day. And I'm gonna go ahead and fix a, the line from here to there. Now, I'm doing this intentionally, that's not horizontal, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a horizontal constraint on that. You'll see that that straightens that line out. And then it's also not connected here, so I'm gonna go ahead and and I'll do this at multiple points, so I'm just showing it to you here, because it's actually, you know, it doesn't matter the fact that this is origin, I'm just doing this so I can, again, put one measurement and have everything change with it, so that I'm not, as I'm making changes, it helps when you do it this way, so you don't have problems with, um, basically where it loses what you're, it doesn't, you know, basically lose a track of what it's trying to do, let alone yourself, uh, when, it, when, you're, when you change a value, because strange things happen sometimes in FreeCAD when you change values, because it tends when it redraws, it doesn't redraw with the same line, um, information and it's better to have it as much as you can d get it all changed and done in the sketch so I'm going to go ahead and say that's so basically what I'm yeah, I just didn't like that for some reason all right so that's exactly what I was talking about a lot of times you actually I, I grab something it didn't like so I'm going to click on the the two points again and I'm going to tell them so now those are are fixed so this line itself and even your reference lines must be fixed if they can move, you'll have an under-confined sketch. So what I'm doing there is, is I have a, a ha basically now have a, 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 a piece um, that is holding that. Oh, wait a second. Why is that not? Yeah. Ah, there we go. I've got redundant constraints. Notice it wouldn't let me make any changes. Because when I added that, sometimes that will conflict with other stuff. So when you click on that, you're, you're, see these are now these two constraints are uh, redundant, and that's because of these being equal plus these being here, the ones on the outside. So basically all I'm gonna do in this case, I'm, this is an easy one, I'll just hit the delete key and it's solved. So now I should be able to, uh, there we go. And that, and that gets back to you do not wanna be over constrained because it will just stop you in your tracks until you fix it. So I have a measurement here. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. That one did not attach the line because it's in kind of hurry. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's attached. And there we go. We have the. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing basically that I did in the other corner. And again, at this point, I'm not worried about the distance. When I set, when I when I actually calculate the thing, it'll it'll draw everything in. I just want to make sure I get my constraints on there properly. That's the number one thing that when I'm, when I'm chasing a, a an un unconstrained item that I can't find, it's usually a point or something like where I'm right now that I thought was connected and isn't, and I'll find the point and move it, and suddenly, oh, okay, it wasn't there. So what I'm gonna basically do now is I'm gonna say that this measurement, that measurement, and this measurement, as well as that one, are equal, and that should draw them into be around the box. So now basically I have 30 millimeter holes and I want and I'm just picking this one, it doesn't matter, since they're equal you can select any of them. And I say okay from the, the, the diameter of the hole I want it to be uh, we'll say those are 3 millimeter holes, we'll say they're 6 millimeter 6 millimeters out. So now the, the sketch has turned green because it's fully constrained. And what that means is, is pretty much there, I'm done. This sketch is, will, should extrude without any problems. Things that would keep this from extruding, even if it says it's fully constrained, potentially, would be like if this corner here and this um, were, were locked in space, but they weren't locked together, because that would create an open uh, sketch. It has to be closed. All your lines have to be closed, or it, it can't do the calculations to extrude it out. Um, typically, when you have problems with, with things wanting to extrude, it's because either that or you have like an extra point 
like if I were to go out here, even if I fix it in space and just put like a point like right there, well, not, not a reference point wouldn't matter, but um, even if I had it fully constrained, if I had grabbed like an actual, like uh, a defining um, point, because that is, you know, something you can define. And then um, if, I, if I were to grab that there, then that would wind up being, even if I locked it, it still would not extrude out. It would say it was fully constrained, but it would not extrude. So that gets me back to one more thing I want to demonstrate here. So let's say I wanted to put a hole in the center just to lighten it up or whatever. Sometimes I'll do that if I'm 3D printing it. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab this line right here, and I'm going to grab a reference uh, point or a uh, uh, yeah, pretty much a point. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it to blue. Oh, try to get it turned blue. There it goes. And I'm going to go ahead and put one here. Oh shoot, I didn't want to do that. But was, that's another thing I just did. I just accidentally converted this line to a constraint by having it selected when I clicked it. So you got to be careful with that. Notice how that changed colors when I did that. You can make a line that is a, a defining line, um, a reference line, and vice versa. So I have a, now, now I have a point on this a point on this line. I want that line to be in the middle, so I'm going to select that, and I'm going to select the point, and I'll go ahead and I'll click on that, and click on the sem the uh, symmetry yeah symmetry constraint, and I click on that, and that puts that point back in the middle. So that's just a reference point that's now dead in the middle. I'm going to do the same on the other axis. There's more than one way to do this. This is just the way that I've, I have done it, uh, that I find works for me. Unfortunately, like many CAD packages, will auto find the midpoints of your lines and specify a, um, a point for you when you're doing it. You have to do it manually still with this. They may, I don't know if they're working on that or not. It's not a big deal uh, for the few, few times I need it. And go ahead, now we're, we're reconstrained. So now I want to grab. I want to be able to find the middle. So I'm going to take lines and basically take a line here. I'm going to pick up this point, make sure that I've got the dot showing that it's that point. Come over here, make sure that I've got it horizontal and that it's touching that line. That'll automatically go back to fully constrained. And we'll do the same going down. There may be a better way to do this. This is the way I have figured out that I and it works well for me. So uh, mileage may vary. So in this point, so now I know by my reference lines that obviously this is the center, but I, these are just lines that are intersecting. I actually have to put a point there to define that it is in the middle. So I'm going to put a point on this line, then I'm going to click on that point in the, in the, the uh, line next to it, and I'm going to say, okay, now this line is attached to that. Um, and this is, you don't need to do all this. This is just something I, you know, I like to know that I'm dead in the middle. And also, the reason I'm doing it this way, and I have done it this way, uh, with this point now I can take and take the measurement here because of the way it's defined no matter what I put in here it's going to stay in the middle I don't have a I don't have to I don't have to make any other changes other than that if I want to change um, the distance that I am away from you know how, how much border I have on it everything change in relation there's no more you know it's a little more to set it up this way but when you're when you're working with something that you're going to be potentially having to fit maybe you got a measurement off this makes life a lot easier as far as you're trying to specify well the center is 10 10 by 20 because or the, you know 10 by 10 because the length is 20 by 20 versus just making it relative and of course since that I have a point here now let me just uh, do that real quick I'm going to go ahead and move go back to align mode and then we're going to extrude because we're going to run out of time if I don't move along. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on that and I'm going to pick up that center point and I'm just going to draw a circle. That's going to leave me unconfined because I don't have a radius on the circle yet. So I'm going to define the radius as 20, what was it, 26 millimeters I think. So. I want 26, I'm gonna make it 13. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. So I hit, accidentally hit the wrong key, and uh, you can, there's these buttons here to look around. Plus, you, there's also mouse combinations um, for clicking and dragging around. That's something that uh, you can actually change the mode of a little bit. All right, so, well, apparently I deleted it. That was great. Edit, undo. And let's try that again. 13. And then I want this to be 31. 
And if you don't know, that's a NEMA 17 mount uh, dimension there. That's actually for a mount for uh, a stepper mo a stepper motor. Uh, I make a, you know, that's that's some of the stuff I've, I've been working with lately. It's 31 millimeters on the hole, and then uh, I think this is 26 or 22. I can't remember. I have to. Doesn't matter. I don't usually use the pilot hole on them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to go ahead and hit close. So I have basically my mount, four holes, and, and everything is relational. I can change it, and it'll just, if I need to make any adjustments later, it'll just all scale with it. So now basically I have the just the 2D part, uh, the 2D dimensions. This this At this point, you can export and save this to laser cut, or at, at, like right now, basically I can go to model, and I could go to sketch and click on file export and I could basically save it as a PDF. I could save it as anything for doing laser cutting or any other uh, function like that. But since um, typically something like this I would probably be, you know, 50-50 laser cutting and or uh, 3D printing, it really doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show the, so there's there's several different functions here you can have on the, uh, the sketch that you can perform. You can pocket or you can pad. We're going to be padding basically if they're opposites. One defines material. One, you can actually use it to take material away, like actually drill a hole through something with it. And I'll show you that in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, extrude that out. So that right now it's saying it's 10 millimeters. So I'm going to um, pan around here on this. You can see that that's defining that right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make this, uh, we're going to do 30 mil or 20 millimeters on the height. A lot of times you would do this is if you have couplers and stuff uh, on your equipment that you're putting the stepper motor on. Um, I tend to have to have a good space in there because the up to the machine is going to take up that space. Like if I have a, a Lovejoy connection or something on. So right there, the uh, the part now is basically that is 3D printable. If I were to go and go to file, oh. One thing, when you're working with um, with these, when you do your export, make sure you only have the item on you're going to export because this is a tree that builds down, your newest being on the bottom. It will export what you have selected in that tree, not necessarily the latest part of it. So um, if you were to add, this is something for doing export, just make sure I get this in there before you know, I run out of time. So so when you're outside of the sketch, you have to use control to multiple select edges. So with doing that, let's say I was I want to have it where it just doesn't look like a blunt object. Um, let's give it some. Uh, you'll see here. So I'm just basically selecting the outer edges of the of the part, the outer lines. And I'm basically going to put a uh, um, a fillet on them. And with this, you can basically put your rounds on there. See, this is one of those things. I accidentally had the front face selected, so it also is doing it, because you can do it by face or by line. Because I had it selected, it's also doing my hole, so I don't want that to go ahead and hit cancel. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to grab these lines one more time, see if I can't miss having, I'm just, I won't do the sides then. I think that's how I got it, I accidentally selected. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a fillet on there. I, just, I, need, I need to show you what I'm talking about, so I, I got to get another feature on the, on the part. All right, so there I've got a fillet. Um, let's just do a <coughs> millimeter round on the on the edges. I, I got uh, I didn't like it. So if you if you fail because you're you've got too much, um, you have something in the way. You can't certain uh, things will not generate if they're the <coughs> math interferes with like a predefined hole or another feature on the item. I'll show you what I mean here. I'm going to take this down to three millimeter. That rendered okay. The difference was is when I went to ten, it was actually hitting these holes and saying I don't know what to do and it wouldn't generate. Uh, that's pretty common with just about any CAD package. Um, so when I get to about right, right there after this, it'll probably fail. Yeah, see, it, it didn't generate that. So I'm going to take that back to five. I'm just basically, I just arbitrarily clicking for that purpose there. So right here, now I have the original pad, and then the next step, you can actually, by hitting space bar, go back and forth between your different pieces. You can turn them all off, and then it just parse is gone. Or you, you know, like I, I ran into the issue where I was working on stuff and I had everything turned on, and I would go to export and it was exporting the wrong thing. Um, so just make sure that you have that. That's just something to keep note of. So with that selected, click on the part I want to export and just do File Export, and you can basically 
it has a few ways you can export, um, to say the least. Uh, obviously, STL is what most people be doing if you're doing 3D printing. Um, I do believe if you export as a PDF, it's actually a 3D viewable PDF. Um, I believe it was this that was able to do that. I have to look and try it. That's not something I want to get into right now. Um, so basically, as saving it as an STL, I could do like uh, name amount and save that to the desktop. And then if I go to my desktop. Oh boy, that's an old version. That'll, that'll, that'll do it though. I don't like the, the Windows one that's built in. It, you can't use it with hardly any printer, so I just want to be sure I drag it in there to show you that it. What I like about it is, it's like as with like um, SketchUp and Tinkercad, it makes really rough, gross-looking angles because they, the, the resolution is not there. With uh, FreeCAD, it does a pretty good job of maintaining your arcs to where they actually look like a circle looks like a circle, not a stop sign. And that's one of the, my biggest gripes of a lot of the free packages is they just don't. Um, yeah, I haven't opened this in a while. This is right. So put that in there. So as you can see, the part immediately rendered, and yeah, it's pretty decent quality. I mean, there's you know, and you can actually adjust that. That's actually a setting you can adjust. Like you know, if you, it depends on if you want your STL file to be you know 500k or five megs, you can do that. Just it'll create that many more points. Um, there is an adjustment for that. So that yeah, that pretty much there. That's the basic um, for doing the you know, like if you wanted to three D print it from there. Um, so going back to the to FreeCAD, the next thing you can do, um, you can sketch on any surface. It doesn't have to be the X Y plane. Your initial one has to be defined somewhere in space. But when you let's say I want I want to put a hole, say to have access. To undo or put in a, like the coupler when I'm working on this piece. Uh, this is actually something I had to do. Is why I'm, I'm speaking of it. Is so I'll go ahead and I'm going to click on this face. So what, I, what I've got selected, it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of a light green, but I've got that this <coughs> surface right there. This is a little better. I've got this surface selected right here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the sketch button. So before in my tasks I had uh, actually yeah it's still there, uh, but I, I don't typically use this task pane. That's kind of like this little help thing. Uh, your actual tools are right here. Your toolbar is here. So I'm going to select the, the surface I want to sketch on. I'm going to click Sketch, and that's going to generate a sketch right there. Now, as I said before, is I, I want to keep this relative, and I want to keep it in the center. So I've got dimensions that I need to pull in that are now outside of my sketch because I am now on the plane of, a, of the side of the part, but this sketch doesn't know where anything's at. I have to tell it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool right here, which is uh, import. It, it basically creates an external geometry link uh, to something that is, it is touching. So by clicking on that right there, I can pick up this edge here, and I can pick up that edge. Those are just basically like a reference, similar to a reference line. And what that does is that gives me a point here and here. Uh, now I can say this, um, I'm gonna do one thing. Put your rounds and your fillets and your chamfers on your part last because if I would've continued, more than likely this would've broke if I made any changes to that uh, round because the reference lines it uses to, I'm gonna take this fillet off. The reference lines it uses to draw the fillets can change. And then if you have anything defined on that that has anything to do with that reference, uh, it's just something they're still working on. It's, you know, it's, it's free software, so there are some uh, catch-22s. That happens to be one I've run into pretty bad before. So I'm going to go back. So if you look, I'm, I'm still on the side, still on the same side, except I've taken off the round. I was just using that to show while I had time because I'm going to be cutting it pretty close here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the, uh, the sketch. And so now I have my, my box back, and I'm going to pick up, I just want to pick up two dimensions. Pick up this, and I might as well just pick up, uh, pick up that one, why not? I really didn't, uh, come on. And the reason I'm doing that is, let's say I want to make sure that no matter what size this is, I'm not even going to define a, a dimension on this, I basically want to make sure I'm in the middle. So I'm going to do the same thing I did when <coughs> I put the hole in the middle here, is I'm going to basically define points on the, between these two lines. So I'm going to change over to references, and I'm going to put a point on this line, and I'm going to put a point on this line, and I'm going to click this, and I'm going to click that one, I believe, 
think I've got that clicked. I can't. Let me just make sure. Now it's selected. And I'm going to say I want that in the middle. And I want this in the middle as well. So there basically I have now, it's, it's, I'm fully constrained, but I haven't even drawn anything yet. I, just, I have points of reference that are fully constrained. And I, I always try to work in that manner to where I keep as much fully constrained as I can. I let it get away a little bit once in a while, but you see I had a little bit of difficulty before because I didn't keep track of everything. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab another reference line like I did earlier, and I'm going to click on this point here. And I'm going to make sure that I've got the horizontal constraint and the uh, constraint there. And this will, again, it'll stay fully constrained. Or it should. It did. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Except this time I'm going to be picking up just the x coordinate on this sketch. It's relative to the sketch. So there I have a fully constrained, but I, I still need to define a center point. So I'm going to go ahead and put a point on this line. And then I am going to click the point, and I'm going to click the one, the other one. I'm going to tell it that it is coincident with that. And now I have a point that's dead in the middle of this. No matter how I change the size of it, I change the height, I change the width, this is going to stay in the middle. Now, if my hole is too big, if I'm going, to, I'm going to put a hole in it here in a minute, obviously you're going to have that problem where you're going to destroy your part because you're going to have nothing left. So, And you can actually make that hole, uh, it's not going to be time to show you that, but you can actually make the hole a percentage of another, dimen of, of another dimension as well. So you can make it re relative, either by multiplying or dividing, depending on what uh, measurement you're coming off of. So I'm going to go ahead and this will be the last thing I do before I get chased away here. And go back to where I'm drawing, uh, oops, grab the circle. Now this is going to add one degree of freedom because I've got a point fixed in space that is a set point because of all the other uh, things I've done. And so I've got one degree of freedom and I already knew what that was going to be because it's the circle diameter. So I'm going to add a radius to that. And we're going to call, we're going to make this a 20 millimeter hole. Oh. What did I just do there? I actually just screwed up. I've actually put the uh, I wanted a 20 millimeter hole, and I put it as the the radius of 20, so I made a 40 on accident. Yeah. So I want to go back and do 10. I do that. That's something I don't know. That's something I always forget. It's like when I make a 20 millimeter hole, I put that in. I'm just thinking radius. You can actually uh, when I when I specify <coughs> um, some other things I do. I'll actually just divide it by two. That way I know what I was intending on the dimension to be. Because you you can just leave the math in there and when you go to look at it, it'll be there. Um, that's just something I do. It's not necessarily right, but it works. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come out of the sketch. I've got a fully constrained sketch with a 20 millimeter hole in the middle of that side on that plane. So I'm going to exit there. Now I'm back out and I have the sketch. So I have the sketch selected. Now what I want to do is I'm going to be putting a hole in it. So instead of, before I use the, the uh, uh, pad tool, now I'm going to use the pocket tool. The pocket tool basically punches a hole in a solid object in your CAD. Now what I can do when I, when I click on that is you can specify a depth for it. And say how far you want it to go through. Or you can specify, um, it's better if, you, if you're going to go through and through to just click uh, do through all because that way you don't have it trying to take a hole out of empty space. It's just punching through and taking everything out. If you, if you specify a 40 millimeter hole and your part's only four, like 30 wide, you're creating extra work for it and you're just asking for geometry problems when you export your model. Don't do it. It's just bad. Um, the other thing you can do, instead of through all, you can do up to the first, which would basically make it do just no matter what the depth is, it's, it's only going to stop it there. And that's, that takes no measurement. That just basically takes it to that surface and stops. So that I could just have it uh, to where just the one side has a hole so I'm not weakening the part too, too much. So from there, that's pretty much the, uh, you know, like an access hole. Like if I was to get a screwdriver in there and take the coupler apart. Uh, I, I use a lot of Lovejoy connectors, a lot of uh, spring, uh, spring connectors with some of the projects I have at the house. So you have those, and let's see here. Then you can also do up to face, and the, this one is the last one. It basically will actually won't work on this one because of the. Uh, actually, it did work because it's, that is the face. So I'm gonna leave it as up to first. Hit OK.
So now I basically have like an, you know, this would like take the size stepper off of like a, uh, like a 3D printer. That's going to be the 17. And then you basically put, you know, have your shaft in the middle here and have your coupler on it, have access.